Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, continuing course of advanced mathematics for teenagers. We are talking right now about solid geometry and in particular um, about an angle which can be formed by two straight lines in the three-dimensional space. Now, um, first of all, let me tell you that um, two lines which are in the same plane um, form the angle which we know basically everything about it, right? So, um, our purpose right now is to transfer the definition which we know about two-dimensional case uh, into a 3D. Well, there is one very important uh, difference. Um, in two-dimensional um, space, two lines are either parallel in which case we can say that they form an angle of zero, basically, degrees or radians, whatever. Or they intersect, and then there is an angle. Now, intersection basically means there is a point which belongs to both lines. Well, in three-dimensional space, that might not be necessarily the case. If you consider these two lines, they cannot actually, they do not have any common uh, points, so they don't actually intersect. Now, how can we measure an angle between two lines which do not have any uh, common points, no intersection? Okay, and here is the procedure which we are going to use to transform this definition from the two-dimensional space into three-dimensional. First of all, Let's consider an angle, well, for simplicity, not. let's consider the angle between rays instead of um, two lines. So you have one ray and you have another ray. And let's consider that these two rays uh, have common origin or vert vertex. Now, um, in two-dimensional case we know what exactly is the angle between these two rays and um, in three-dimensional case first of all let's consider the situation when they also have common origin so we have something situations like this in three-dimensional space one and another and they have common origin all right not like this so first they have common origin, common vertex of these two rays now, um, from the previous um, material, we know that if you have two rays in three-dimensional space which share the common origin, there is one and only one plane which they belong to. Well, incidentally, how to basically prove it? Well, we have to go to the um, axioms of uh, solid geometry. Um, it, it can be proven very easily. Let's take two other points except origin, one on one ray and another on another. Now there is an axiom that three points define one and only one plane which uh, contains these three points. That's number one. So we have at least one plane. And then the second axiom is that if two points of a line, straight line, belong to a plane, then the entire line belongs. Same thing here. Two points belong to a plane, so the entire line between them belongs to the plane. So that's how we prove that there is one and only one plane um, which contains these two rays with, with, with a common vertex. Okay, so now, even if we are talking about three-dimensional space, in theory these two rays belong to one and only one plane, some plane. Okay, now let's just say that three-dimensional concept of an angle between these two rays with a common origin in a three-dimensional space is actually exactly the same as their angle in the plane, one and only plane, which contains these two uh, rays. I mean, this is that, some, something absolutely natural and trivial. If you have two rays, so in three-dimensional space, the angle between them is basically the same as the angle within the plane they belong to. Okay, now our next uh, problem is to define an angle between two rays which 
do not have a common origin, something like this. Okay? But this is actually very simple now, because, for instance, we have this situation, okay? Forget about this plane, there is no plane which contains both of them. So, this is one. And this is another. Now, let's pick any point in space and draw one ray which is parallel to this one and similarly directed and another which is parallel to this one and similarly directed. Can we do that? Can we draw a line parallel to another line through a point given outside of that line? Yes, we did consider that situation uh, already before. Very quick um, return back, flashback. You have a, a point and you have a line, so there is a plane, one and only plane, which contains this line and this point. And within that plane, we draw a parallel line, we know how. Same thing here. So, now, what we are saying is that by definition, the angle between these two rays uh, in three-dimensional space, which do not have the same origin, is an angle between these two rays where I chose completely randomly an origin and um, draw a line parallel to this one and draw a line parallel to this one and similarly direct it. So that's the definition. Now, what's important about this definition is that, well, it has certain random um, character. We choose randomly this point. Now my question is, what if I will choose a different point in space? And do exactly the same. One, uh, one ray would be parallel to this one and one ray would be, par would be parallel to this one. Will I get a different angle? I mean, in theory, these two are completely different constructions. Okay, now we have to prove, basically, that the angle will be the same. But this is actually very easy. Why? Because since this is parallel to this and this is parallel to this, these two are parallel among themselves. We have already proven that in one of the theorems before. So, these are parallel. Similarly, these are parallel, because each one of them separately is parallel to this. So, now we have two different angles in three-dimensional space with correspondingly parallel uh, sides. And again, we, ha we have already proven before that these two angles are exactly the same. They are congruent. So that proves that our definition makes sense. Because if there is no such equality between these two, then the definition doesn't make any sense, obviously. So, because the concept of an angle would not be defined properly. It could be one and then another. But in this, in this case, considering there is this theorem um, about uh, congruence of these two um, angles, that means that the angle is completely defined. Now, why did I choose to work with rays rather than lines? Well, it's just a little complication which we have, uh, maybe a nuance if you wish. It's very easy to deal with. Um, let's go back to the plane. Now, if on the plane you have two rays, which form some angle, well, how many angles they form? Four, to be exact. One angle, another angle, the third angle, and the fourth angle. So let's say this is a, I don't know, 30 degrees, right? Then this would be 360 minus 30, which is whatever, 330 degrees. And this is the positive direction, this is the negative direction. You see, it's really a lot of different angles. Now, if you take 
two lines, it would be even more difficult to say what kind of an angle between them. Because you have one, two, three, four angles, well, granted two of them are the same, so at least two angles you have, and each one of them can be um, uh, counted in a positive or a negative direction. So there is certain uh, fluidity, if you wish, in, in, in this particular case. Now, what do we do in three-dimensional space? We want to simplify our job. Now, to simplify our job is, first of all, forget about direction. If you are in uh, I if you are on the plane, you can actually look from the top and you see counter-clockwise or, or, or clockwise uh, movement. If you are in a space, in this situation, there is no such thing as counter-clockwise or, or, or clockwise. So there is no direction, so to speak. So forget about the sign of the, of the angle. And now, considering this and this, we usually choose the smallest one as the angle between um, two rays, right? So whenever we talk about two rays or even two lines in three-dimensional space we forget about the sign of the angle and we choose a smaller one so in this case it's this now if, if it's in space something like this again we have a point one is parallel another is parallel to this so this would be the angle between these two lines so that's how we define precisely the angle between two lines in space which are not intersecting each other, which are skewed. So, finished about definition. We have defined an angle and we proved that the definition makes sense. Okay, now, what's next? Next is to, um, to prove a couple of theorems. Okay, we have three theorems which I'm going to prove here. Very, very simple. One is, if you have a plane and a perpendicular to this plane, so plane is gamma, perpendicular is A. And any other line on the plane, B. So, what I'm stating right now is that the lines A and B, A is perpendicular to the plane gamma and B belongs to gamma, they are always perpendicular to each other. The angle between these two is 90 degrees, the right angle. Now, by definition of the perpendicular line, we know that any line which goes through this point on the, uh, on, uh, on the plane gamma is perpendicular to A. Let's call it B prime. That, that we know. That's, that's actually the definition of the perpendicular. Perpendicular to the plane is perpendicular to any line which is in that plane and goes through the intersection to the base. Now, but look, this is parallel to this one, right? So an angle between this line and this line can be formed by our process of bringing together lines from this point, let's call it A, well, we already have this point on this line, so all we have to do is draw a parallel line to this one, right? And the angle between A and B is, by definition, an angle between A and B prime, and A B and, and B prime form the right angle because A is perpendicular to the plane. So that's why the angle between N and B, A and B, the angle in three-dimensional sense, even if they do not intersect each other, they're skewed, still is the right angle. Very simple theorem, and only one um, additional construction I need is to draw a line parallel to line B through the base of the perpendicular A. Simple. Next. Okay, what's next? Um, Okay, very similarly, we have 
some kind of a plane and perpendicular. Now, what I was talking before, that any line on the surface um, of the plane uh, of the plane gamma is perpendicular to A. Now we're talking in this particular theorem about any line which is parallel to uh, plane gamma. And the statement of the theorem is that any line parallel to the gamma would be perpendicular to uh, line A, which is perpendicular to, to, to gamma. Again, it's a very easy theorem to prove. How? Well, let's say this is point A. Now, we can always draw a plane through A and B. Now, again, B is parallel to gamma, and the intersection of this plane with gamma would be something like this. That would be my B prime. So B prime is intersection of gamma and plane which goes through line B and point A. Now, there was a theorem again before that if you have a line parallel to a plane and you have a plane which goes through that line intersecting this plane, then the line of intersection would be parallel. Okay, fine. So this is line of intersection. It's parallel to B. But now this line of intersection is intersecting perpendicular A right at the base, which means it's supposed to be perpendicular. A and B prime are perpendicular. That's why A and B are perpendicular. Also very easy. Next. Now we have, well, it's kind of a reverse theorem. We have two lines which are perpendicular to each other. So this is our plane. This is our A. And I know that B perpendicular to A. Now, my theorem is, if B is perpendicular to A, not necessarily uh, intersecting, somewhere, let's say, um, A is within this plane of this board, and B is uh, um, above and beyond somewhere in, in the space, not on the board. Okay. Now, in this case, B would be parallel to gamma. So A is perpendicular to B, A is perpendicular to gamma. Now even if A and B is empty, inter A intersecting with B is empty, I still have that B is, is parallel to gamma. Okay. Now, here is how we can prove it. Well, let's do it in an easier case, what if B does intersect? If B does intersect A, what I will do is the following. Through A and B, I can draw uh, a plane and it will intersect this, this plane it will intersect at B prime. Now, this angle is right because A is perpendicular to entire plane gamma. Now, this angle is right by, by assumption which I just made. Now, A and B are perpendicular and I made an assumption that they actually have a, an intersection. So, these are two perpendicular to the same uh, uh, line A, and they are lying within the same plane, obviously, so they are parallel to each other. It's a plane geometry, two-dimensional case. 
in this plane we have two perpendicular to a line so they are parallel to each other and since they are parallel to each other b and b prime i can say that the angle um, I can say uh, I, I can refer it to a theorem um, which states that if line one line outside of the of the, of the plane is parallel to a, a line on the plane, then this line is parallel to an entire plane. Again, that was one of the theorems before when I was talking about parallelism between lines and planes. So if line is parallel to one line on the plane, then it's parallel to an entire plane. So in this easier case, we have proven that this theorem is true. Now, let's consider a little bit more, com more complex case. What if they do not intersect? So B is somewhere behind, let's say. Now, what I will do is, well, very simple thing. I can just pick any point A on, on the line A and draw a parallel to line B. Well, not exactly. Parallel. This is parallel. This would be my B prime. And then I will draw a plane through A and B prime to get the B second. And basically continuing the theorem after that. So this angle obviously is perpendicular because I have just already uh, proven that. And that's why angle between N, A, A and B. Because angle between A and B is exactly the same by definition of the angle in the three-dimensional space. It's exactly the same as angle between A and B prime. So B prime is also perpendicular to A as well as B. So we basically refer to the, uh, a, 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 a smaller, a, a simpler version of this theorem. Um, we have one line which is perpendicular and uh, we have proven that this line is parallel to entire, the entire plane. But if this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this, then B is parallel to B second, which therefore proves that B is parallel to an entire plane gamma. So these are very easy three theorems. Well, uh, I hope you don't have an impression that every theorem which we will be talking about is simple. I mean, maybe we will talk about simple theorems, but there are much more complex. Well, this three-dimensional case, it, it's really complex because it's always difficult to, to have this um, image of how these components intersect with each other. Like, for instance, in this case, I'm just saying that line B is not intersecting A. It's either behind the plane which is this board or, or above it. But to, to imagine it is not probably difficult. Uh, I mean, it's not probably easy. So that's why I would prefer to start with these really simple problems, just to basically develop your space, um, view, uh, space vision. That's what's very important in uh, solid geometry, a space vision. And by the way, this space vision would probably be very useful for you anywhere, wherever you go. I mean, if you are an architect or if you are, you know, building some machine or constructing something, I mean, it's always very, um, very useful to have this um, three-dimensional vision. All right. Uh, that's it for today. Um, I wish you register to unizor.com website because in this case you will be able to um, have the functionality of like a real school which means you can enroll in certain subject uh, like solid geometry for instance and uh, you, uh, you you can uh, take the exams um, there is a supervision role in uh, in this particular case so some supervisor your parent maybe or your teacher can look at the uh, results of your exams and you can pa you can take exams as many times as you want basically just basic you know viewing whether your results are improving or not all right so that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>